Please turn in your Bibles this morning to the book of Job. I'd like to read from Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14. I encourage you to follow in the Word of God. Read along in the scriptures as I read out loud from Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14 beginning with verse 1. The Word of God says, Man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Anybody relate to that? Sometimes we're having lots and lots of blessings, but then on other occasions we're having lots of trouble and we could say with Job, man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Even if you live to be a hundred years old, I can tell you I'm 73 and life goes by in a hurry. Our lives are as a hand breadth, our lives are as a weaver's shuttle, our lives are as a shadow. Uh, there are many different ways that the Word of God describes our lives here on this earth, but they're always a short period of time. Even if we live to be a hundred years old, it's going to be a short period of time. So Job says, man that is born of woman is a few days. That's the first thing. Your life will go by in a hurry. And then he says, and it's full of trouble. Every day uh, or many days of our lives are full of trouble. Sometimes they're like Job, full of trouble in that we might lose all of our possessions like Job did, or we might lose all of our children. That, that's about as bad as it can get when you have ten children and you lose all ten of your children and all of your possessions all in one day, that's a bad, bad day. And so Job knew, to, knew what he was talking about from experience when he says, man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. You might say after you had lost all of your possessions and all ten of your children, you might say, well, it can't get any worse than this. Well, it did. It got worse than that. Job had boils from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. He had whole body covered in boils. And then his wife said, just curse God and die. And that's what Job wanted to do. If you go back and read in the third chapter of Job, you'll find that Job did want to die. In fact, let's go back there and just notice a couple of scriptures in Job chapter 3. Look at the first three verses. Job chapter 3, this is after he's lost all of his possessions and all ten of his children and lost his health and his wife has said curse God and die and then his friends came and they did good for a while they sat quietly, didn't open their mouths, but then when they did open their mouths they want to know what in the world have you done wrong to cause God to punish you so severely as this, so Job then had his own friends make false accusations against him. So he says in Job chapter 3 verse 1, after this opened Job's mouth and cursed his day and Job spake and said, let the day perish wherein I was born and the night in which I, it was said there is a man child conceived. Come down to verse 11. He says, why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Do you think Job sincerely from his heart wished he had never been born? I do. I think Job, sometimes in our lives when things get real, real bad, we want to die. And we wish we had never been born. And that was the, con that was the condition that Job was in. Uh, in Job chapter 3, he wanted... He wished he had never been born. Now go back to Job chapter 14. After he says in Job chapter 14 verses 1 and 2, Man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. He comes forth like a flower. He's cut down. What happens to a flower when it's cut down? What does that flower do? The flower dies, it withers. Then he gives a little different analogy coming down to verse 7. Instead of just talking about a flower being cut down, he uses the illustration of a tree. 
being cut down. Verse 7, for there is hope of a tree if it be cut down that it will sprout again and the, the tender branch thereof will not cease though the root thereof wax old in the earth and the stalk thereof die in the ground yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth boughs like a plant. Have any of you ever seen a tree that was cut down and then seen that it might have been the next year, it may have been two or three years later, but you began to see there were sprouts that began to come up from that tree. So Job is beginning to give a little light uh, in the seventh verse. He says, now, I'm like a flower that's cut down and it just withers away. Then he says, now, if you think about a tree, a tree can be cut down, but there is hope that that tree might bring forth a bud and might still be alive if that water is given to the roots of that tree. Then come down verse 14. Verse 14, he asked a question. Job asked, if a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. We're going to be talking about if a man die, if a man die, will he live again? Can a man live again after he is dead? Can a tree live again after it's been cut down? Can a tree live again after it's cut down? Yes, it can. Can a man live again? If a man die, shall he live again? And the answer to that question is, yes, a man can live again. And when you look at a corpse, when you look at someone that's laying in a casket, you might say, well, there is absolutely no life there. You can touch them, you can talk to them, you can do everything you can to revive a dead body, but that, de that body that's dead, you're not going to see that body right then. You may not see that body live again, but that body is going to live again because Jesus Christ redeemed us, body, soul, and spirit. And I believe in the literal resurrection of the body from the dead. I believe that just as Christ died and rose again, I believe that the Word of God makes it very plain that we too shall be raised from the dead. And that's a great blessing for us to know that. Uh, Job has said, I'm waiting for that change. I'm waiting for that change when I'm going to die, and I'm waiting for that change that I'm going to be raised from the dead. The dead shall live again. And when that dead shall live again, it's going to be raised incorruptible and be with God forever in that eternal heaven. So Job asked the question, if a man die, shall he live again? Go with me to Romans chapter 8 because the Apostle Paul, as he speaks about the hope that we have in Christ Jesus, he speaks about that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. And he starts off with the most probable of things that could possibly separate us from the love of God, and that's death. If anything could separate you from the love of God, it would be death. But here's what the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 38. Romans 8, verse 38. He says, For I am persuaded that neither death, and he's going to name nine or ten things, but he says, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When you die, are you separated from the love of God? You are not. He says, and that's the promise that he's given us here. Paul said, I am persuaded that death cannot separate us from the love of God. Why? Because if a man die, he shall live again. Go with me to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Turn in your Bibles a few pages past where we're presently reading. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 
And I want you to know that all of our hope of a man living again after he dies, it all hinges on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Every one of us, as children of God, if you know the truth of the Word of God, you know that even though a man dies, you know he will live again. And that, that's contingent on the resurrection of Christ. Look in your Bibles at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. The Word of God says, For I have delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also receive, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Now what did Peter feel when Christ died on the cross of Calvary? What did the apostles feel when Christ died on the cross of Calvary? Were they rejoicing that Christ had died for their sins? Were they rejoicing that Christ was dead? No, because they did not fully, completely believe that Christ would be raised from the dead. Even though he had told them he would be raised from the dead. He even told them on the third day he was going to be raised from the dead. But he didn't fully believe that. But then Peter tells us when he's writing his epistle, he says, God hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Did Jesus live again after he was crucified on the cross of Calvary? Indeed he did. So verse 3 says, I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He died, he was buried, and he rose again. Christ Jesus rose from the dead. And then he comes down in verse 12 and begins to teach us and show us that just as Christ died and rose again, that we too are going to be raised from the dead. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, come down to verse 12. Now if Christ Jesus be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? One of the common false beliefs in the days of the apostles was that death was the end of life. I want you to know, brethren, that death is not the end of life. Death is merely the separation of life from the body. The Bible tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes that in the very moment that we die, the Spirit returns to God that gave it. And then the Word of God tells us that one day Jesus is coming back and even these bodies are going to be raised from the dust of the earth. And I'll tell you, brethren, that's one of the most glorious truths that we need to rejoice in, is that even though we die, if a man die, he shall live again. Verse 13 says, But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have tested out of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins." I want you to know, brethren, that Christ died for our sins, and the scripture says, and he was raised again for our justification. The death of Christ alone is not going to get you into eternal heaven. It's the death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ. That's what our belief, that's what the Word of God teaches, that's what our hope is in, is in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if Christ be raised, then we have a hope that we too shall be raised. Verse 18 says, Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ perisheth. If in this life only we have hope, we are of all men most miserable. But, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Listen, brethren, Jesus Christ was the first one to be raised from the dead to never die again. During the life of Jesus Christ, he raised people from the dead. Name somebody that you know that Jesus raised from the dead while he was here on this earth. 
Lazarus. That's one. He raised Jairus' daughter. He raised people from the dead. But every one of those people that he raised from the dead, they died again. But Jesus Christ is the first fruits of them that slept. Jesus Christ is the first one that was raised from the dead to never die again. And so it is that we who are in Christ Jesus, we too shall die, but we shall be raised from the dead. Amen. Hallelujah is right. You might say, well, this, this doesn't sound like a Christmas sermon. I'll tell you, brethren, he came into the world to save us from our sins. He was born of the Virgin Mary. I had another sermon completely prepared until 8.30 this morning, and God just flat took it away and said, you're not going to preach that. It was a good Christmas sermon. But I'll tell you, the one that God has put on my heart today is for us to rejoice in the resurrection of the body, to know that we're going to be raised from the dead. If a man die, Job asked the question, if a man die, shall he live again? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Amen and hallelujah. If a man die, he shall live again. Come down to verse 51, still in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. How does the word of God refer to the children of God who are dead? It refers to them as being asleep in Christ Jesus. Isn't that a wonderful blessing to be asleep? You don't know how good it is till you can't sleep. There was one occasion where Jesus made the statement, if he sleepeth, he doeth well. Speaking about Lazarus. They said, he's asleep. He's dead. And he says, well, if he is asleep, he doeth well. It's a good thing to be asleep. It's a good thing to be asleep in Christ Jesus. It's a good thing that when we die, we're going to be asleep in Christ Jesus. And so verse 51 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. You listen now. The dead... All those in the graves, doesn't matter if they were buried at sea, it doesn't matter if their bodies were burned, doesn't matter if their bodies have gone back to the dust of the earth, the dead in Christ shall rise from the grave. Man die, shall he live again? Why, why does Job say all of that? What's the, what's the point of this? Well, Job was waiting for that change that one day he was going to be raised into an incorruptible body. He was waiting for that day. He was looking forward to that day. See, all his days on this earth, he says, man that is born of woman is of few days and full of trouble. What did he know about the difference in us being born into this world and us being raised from the dead? He knew that when we are raised from the dead, we're going to be in that eternal home forever where there'll be no more sorrow, sickness, no more pain, and no more death. And so he looked forward to that change that was going to take place one day at the resurrection of the body. Look at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 beginning in verse 13. Listen brethren, we're all going to die unless Jesus comes back before the final coming of Christ. Unless he comes back, you're going to die. And you ought not to be afraid of death. The Apostle Paul said, O death, where is thy sting? Oh, sting, where is thy victory? Death does not have a victory over the people of God. Have you ever seen anyone that their loved one was in the grave or in the casket? And they fell over the casket and they wailed and they screamed and they cried and they carried on. Have you ever seen anybody do that? There may be different reasons why they do that. I'm not going to speculate but I do know this, the dead, the dead shall rise again. The dead have no more sorrow, no more sickness, no more death. Those that cannot be comforted in the death of a loved one, it's because they don't have a hope of the resurrection of the dead. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 the word of God says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. 
I'll tell you, brethren, if I had no hope of the resurrection of the body, if I had no hope that the spirit of my loved one has already gone home to be with God, I don't think I would ever bury that body. I think I would put them above ground. I would do everything I could to preserve that body. But because I believe in the resurrection of the body, and I believe that at the very moment that, that uh, person dies, the spirit is already returned to God that gave it, I can go to that graveside because I'm looking forward to the resurrection of that body one day. And so Paul says, don't sorrow as others that have no hope. Verse 14, 1 Thessalonians 4, 14 says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. See, what does everything about our resurrection, what does it hinge on? The resurrection of Jesus Christ. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. What is it that's going to come with Jesus back to this earth? Where is the body? Is it the body that's going to come back? The body's already down in the grave. Verse 14 says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Jesus is coming back one day. And he's going to bring all those that are asleep in Christ Jesus with him. That's the spirit and the soul of those that have already gone home to be with the Lord. He's going to bring that spirit back. And the word of God says, if verse 14, we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Those bodies, the dead in Christ, are going to rise first then he says in verse 17 then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord wherefore comfort one another with these words did you know that in all the Bible and the Bible says comfort one another but never in the Bible do you hear this expression except right here Comfort one another with these words. These words, you go home and read and study 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. These are words of comfort to the people of God who believe in the resurrection of the body. I hope that you and I can see the beauty of the resurrection of the body. And to know that when we are raised from the grave, we're going to be incorruptible, sinless, completely. We're going to be conformed to the image of the Son of God, and we're going to be taken home to be with the Lord forever. In that home, eternal in the heavens, not made with hands, where there will be no more sorrow of sickness, no more pain, and no more death. Do you fear death? Do you fear the death of your loved ones? You ought not to. Because they're then released from all the suffering of this world. In fact, the Word of God says that the day of one's death is better than the day of his birth. Now you think about that. How many of you rejoiced in the day of the birth of your children? Oh yes. I was the happiest man on the face of the earth with every one of my children and my grandchildren. I rejoiced at their birth. But you know, they're going to have to go through some hard times in this life. And the day, the day of one's death, all their suffering is going to be over. And that body that goes back into the ground, that's not the end of the body. That's not the end of the life. The life go home, goes home to be with God. And one day that life and that body are going to be reunited. And the body is going to be changed and conformed to the image of the Son of God. And we're going to be taken home to be with the Lord forever. The Word of God explains in Hebrews chapter 2 that people before the resurrection of Jesus Christ, people were in bondage to the fear of death. Let me say that again. Before the resurrection of the body of Jesus Christ, people had a horrible fear of death because they saw death as the end of life. Now in Hebrews chapter 2, I want you to listen carefully. There's an important lesson in verses 14 and 15. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. The Word of God says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, who are the children? 
That's me and you. That's all the family of God. The children, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Who is that that took part of being in the flesh? Jesus. Now watch. That through death, whose death? His death. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. What bondage were they in? They were afraid of death. They feared death. And now the word of God says Jesus came and was born in the flesh so that he could die in the flesh and he could have a victory over death, hell, and the grave. And the devil is defeated by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And those that believe Christ rose, raised from the dead, they are delivered from that torment of fearing death. What a glorious, glorious truth that's expressed in those two verses. Now, go with me in closing. Let's go back to Job. Poor old Job. <laughs> Poor old Job. How many of you have ever felt like your life was on a, a roller coaster? Up here, down here. Up here, down here. I think that most of our lives, sometimes they're like a roller coaster. You're on the mountaintop, then you're down in the valley. You're on the mountaintop, you're down in the valley. And that's what it was with Job. The day that Job lost all of his possessions and all ten of his children, he said, the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Was he happy that day? Was he rejoicing that day? He was rejoicing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then he had all those boils and his wife said, curse God and die. And then his friends turned against him and then he wished he had never been born. Now watch. What was the question Job asked in Job 14, verse 14? What was the question that Job asked in Job 14 and verse 14. If a man die, shall he live again? Was there a question in Job's mind? If a man die, shall he live again? Well, you go home and you read verses from chapter 14 through chapter 19, and you'll find that a major change took place in the understanding of Job. Looking at Job chapter 19, same man that said, if a man die, shall he live again? The same man that said, I wish I'd never been born. Now in Job chapter 19, verses 23 through 27, we find these words. He says, oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book. <laughs> what a blessing. They were written and they were printed in a book uh, and forever will be in that book. That they were graven with an iron pen and lead in the rock forever. Now listen carefully to verse 25. For I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the, last, at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Did he know did you know the answer to this question? What was this question in Job 14, 14? If a man die, shall he live again? Does he answer the question in Job chapter 19, verse 25 and 26? For I know that my Redeemer liveth. That's what starts off his understanding that he's going to live again. I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Do you believe that? Do you believe that your body, when it's put in that grave and goes back to the dust of the earth, do you believe that body is going to be raised from the dust of the earth? I believe it as much as I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. I believe my body, your body, and the body of all the family of God, our bodies are going to be raised from the dust of the earth and conformed to the image of the Son of God. And then he says in verse 27, after he says in verse 26, though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. He says, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins 
be consumed within me. I'll tell you, brethren, it doesn't matter what happens to my body. If it's burned or whatever else happens, I want you to know in my flesh, I shall see God. I am absolutely 100% sure that because of the birth of Jesus Christ, <laughs> see, he was born in this world. And Hebrews 2, 14 and 15 says, one of the reasons he was born in this world is to get the victory over death. And now we have that victory over death in Jesus Christ, and we have no reason to fear death. If a man die, shall he live again? Yes, he shall. May God help us to rejoice in the truth of the resurrection of Christ, and in our resurrection is my prayer for Christ's sake.